Welcome to Platypus Scotsman. Uh, this is part one of this uh, Hypermatter build. And this is what it looks like so far. It's not quite done, but I'm gonna start putting up videos. One of the things I forgot to point out in the first one, which I did in the industrial or the power plant, is I didn't show a lot of sanding of the edges. So the plastic is overlapped a little bit. And then as it dries, I'll sand it down towards a smooth beveled edge. And I didn't show a lot of that because I'd shown it before. and I. Guess I got caught up in sanding this thing that I didn't do it. But real quick, if you wanna see pictures of this or any other pieces that I've done, you hop on over to Instagram uh, under Platypus Scotsman, you can check out the pictures. But anyway, let's go on part one and check out the build for the main towers. And when I say main towers, I just mean the bare bones towers that's just the skin on. In this build, I'm gonna cover designs or techniques, uh, and then I may use a lot of those techniques, but I'm not gonna video them all. But this is one where you just get a piece of graph paper, do your main stencil, draw it out on each one of the, or draw it out how many ever you want. I want six. Uh, I'm gonna kinda of do like a interior of a wing. It's gonna be, have, have ribs, and that's gonna be kind of the main premise behind the interior structure. But anyway, I went and did that, and cut it out, stenciled it, and now I'm gonna cut these out. Just gonna go along the top and cut them all out at once or at least so they're all the same length. Not gonna press heavy when I do the first scoring pass. And then just snap it. There you go. Gonna do each one of these individually and just do the same thing, cut them out, snap it, and go from there. On these cut, just try to make them as close as you can. I mean, they're gonna be spaced far enough apart. It might not, it's probably not gonna be that big of a deal. We'll see, I guess. The other thing too, is you can put these three together like this, cause this, it's gonna be three. I can get them off the freaking thing. You can put these three together like this and see how close they are. And then if you need to, just kind of pinch them with your fingers and get an emery board and make them closer, but they're gonna be spaced far enough apart. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. Only if they're really dramatically off, I'd probably trim them. But other than that, I think they're gonna be, they'll be fine. This is a piece of styrene that's a little bit thicker. And I've done some half inch tick marks on here to so I have, so I can line it up with this tool. And it's gonna light it up and then cut it. This is just easier than doing with an X-Acto knife, maybe. I'm just putting my hand over it so it doesn't fly across the table. So just line up with the tick marks and cut it. And now these are cut. I'm just gonna go quarter to corner on them. Just so I have my, my triangle piece that's 90 degrees. This will be the 90 degree ribbing that'll go inside to keep things straight up and down and also support it. I am using 0.5 millimeter thick uh, styrene. And what I've done is this is the width of the styrene and it just makes it easy so I have to do less cuts and less waste. So I made four pieces, uh, one on each side that are is for this piece right here. And now what I'm doing is I wanna have all the ribs in the same location. So I'm gonna do, use my square and use just tick marks. And I want it kind of about a quarter of an inch in on this side and quarter of an inch in on this side. And then that's about six inches, so three inches in the middle is where I'll do it. I'm just gonna make an arrow on to, for the top on these so they're aligned, just so the tick marks match up. Because I have done it where I didn't do that and it just happens to be off just a little bit, but it's enough to cause, cause you a little bit of a headache. See, not too, much to, not too hard to work around, but it's just, might as well just remove that problem right out the, right out of the gate. I made the lines all the way across where I did the little tick marks. And now I'm gonna take my weld on number three and I'm gonna put these supports, I'm gonna butt it up right against that line. And weld on number three is just a compound that melts your plastic 
like a glue would, but I just like it better. And dip my brush in it and apply it like so. Well, number three takes about, I don't know, 12 to 24 hours to totally cure if you were to want to sand it, but it doesn't take long to get a support. This is a little bit taller, so it's going to take a, a sec but it doesn't take long before it sets up. I like how fast it is. And I've used it on several other builds that are scratch built with styrene. And this just helps my ribbing when I put it on, uh, that it stays straight up and down. The other thing too is I will use this a lot in builds, but I'm not gonna show it every time I use it uh, as far as assembling. What I'll do is I'll show it like this, and then I'll show it after the fact once I get it all done. This is a very useful jig. What I'm doing now is I'm just gonna butt it up against the side, put a couple magnets on there to pin it in and just go like that ever so gently. Get some weld on my brush and go up the sides so it tacks on. And this is just to, to initially get the tack on and also do it along the bottom. And just hold it there until it's kind of firm and tacky. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in here like I did this one over here, butt up against, make sure it's pressure against this wall so it's even. And it's butt up against the bottom as well. And I'm just gonna tack it on, get some weld on my brush, tack it on to where it's snug. Let it kind of firm up a little bit. Once that's done, I'm gonna hit the other side. I'm just gonna apply a weld on where all the joints, not joints, but where it's touching the plastic. Just make sure it's all snug. And by putting these ribs in here, that's how you get it straight up and down. This jig's pretty handy. So I've secured this piece in the jig and now I'm going to insert the other side and I'm going to make sure the panel is going on, well, these uh, guides or whatever go on the inside. Make sure it's all where I want it to be. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure this is pinned against that wall. So it's, it's straight with this one. I want to make sure this is pinned against this and I want to make sure these two pieces are, are down. So I'm putting pressure with my thumb this way putting pressure on this, and I'm also putting pressure on my thumb down. So all those things, well, my four fingers pushing this down, making sure everything's aligned, everything's flat on the bottom. And then once I do that, I'm using two fingers on the other side to make sure it's secured against the wall or the, or the ribbing. And then just apply the weld on and hold it for a few minutes to where it's secure and it's not gonna move on me. Come to the next piece and do the same thing. Now it's not as critical to make sure it's against the far wall because it's already secure over there, but I still want to make sure everything is snug. Then once this is all dry, what I'll do is I'll pop it out and I'll go back and put weld on all the joints again because uh, I wasn't able to get everything. So I'll just do that again once it's all dry. I've now cut a piece of styrene for the back and I'm just lining this up. I'm using my ruler to make sure everything's flat against the bottom. It does overlap a little bit. And the reason why is because once I weld it on or push the, uh, put the weld on, then I can trim it down and, and sand it, and the joint is better. But just line it all up, making sure I have pressure down on it. Get my weld on number three. And I probably should have put on the metal because I may actually glue this to my mat. I've done that before. Coming to the other side, but this time I'm gonna do the inside so I don't glue it to my mat. And I'm just getting most of it on there. Uh, I'll tack it all up after it's all done and dry, but at least the stuff I've already done. Yeah, I should have did it on the inside. That's okay. So this is what I want to do. I want to uh, put the rest of the shingles on, not shingles, but the rest of the panels on. And I want to overlap them so I can glue them and then come back and sand them and hopefully get a good join on them to where it's smooth. So how I'm doing this is I glued this on and now I've cut some side panels to the same size. And what I want to do is I just want to lay it, stand it up like this so I can get the panel to, to be even with the rest of the panels. I'm just pin pinching this panel in here to where it's against the rib and it's also against the top. And then I'm just gonna glue right there and hold that. That way it just kind of keeps that in place where I want it to be. And it's even with all the rest of these panels. Then once that's there, I wanna push this one in, do the same thing. And just glue that. And last but not least, I wanna do the top. Sometimes that might come apart, so you just need to glue that section right there. 
just to pinch it down so there's no seams. And it's okay if I put pressure on the rib because it's not gonna really distort the rest of it. In hindsight, I probably wish, I probably should have used just a little bit thicker styrene, but I can still make it work. So now I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure. I just wanna make sure that there's contact and I'm gonna glue the rest of it on. And I'm gonna also glue it on the inside as well. And I definitely wanna make sure there's contact all the way around. You can do that also by shining a light on the other side. And right now I have the luxury to, to be able to glue both sides. But when you get to the final panels, you don't have that luxury anymore. So there is a trick. Okay, now that that piece is on, this piece goes in here now. Now all the other pieces are done, I'm gonna glue this piece in. I want it to go underneath this one. That's the whole idea is you have it go underneath the other one. And I'm gonna glue the top, just pin it in. Right here. And wait for that to dry. Okay, now what I'm gonna do right here is I'm just gonna push the brush underneath and, and it'll go in and create a better bond because it's it's putting plastic on, I mean, it's putting the weld on between both pieces of plastic. And just make sure that's all pressed up in there and this piece is snug against the other one. And that'll create a good bond. And this has to, I let this sit for several hours before I come back and even start working with it and sanding it. Cause I want the weld on to be really dry. And so this stage right here is one of your more time consuming ones cause you really want it to be dry before you start sanding anything. I've added more to the top using the same methodology of just sanding and gluing and, and but in the other order and now i'm going to add some supports to this because i want it to come out a little bit okay i've cut the piece for the top of this and what i want to do now is i want to bevel these edges right here so it slopes down like that and that way it has, had a, has a better seam and when i press it to sand it i want to make sure that i have it even uh, it's even pressure all the way across because if you, if you don't and you press it here, it's going to sand here more than it is here. So you want to have it an even pressure all the way across. And I'm just guessing on the angle. So like that, just so this is slope, that slope. So when I put these pieces on, it's a sloped edge. I'll just do it like that and I'll glue it on. I also beveled this piece too because I'm going to have another piece going down like that. I want it flat with all these edges. That's why I'm gluing it like this. So this is just even. I'm going to eyeball it as far as being center. Then glue this piece right here. What I want to do here is I want to do a vent uh, on the top. So it's going to sit like that. So what I did here is I cut some quarter inch uh, sheet styrene. I think this is 0.04 inches. And uh, I put this one down first, overlapped a little bit, butted this one up, up, up against it, put these pieces in here. But when I did, I beveled that side and I beveled that side. And so when I put it in, it is flush up against here better, same over here, and then allowed this piece here to be uh, flush up against that as well. And what I'm doing now is just gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna sand the interior here to make it a little bit more uh, flush. And then I'll put the bottom on. What I'm doing now is I'm making pieces that kind of jet off the side like this. So it's very important. Well, did the old technique, support the inside, but on this, you want to bevel the insides of this. So when it goes up, it butts up against this, it's flush and you don't have that flat piece that makes an edge that uh, you really can't deal with. So what I did is I cut a piece like this, measured two inches on this side, three inches on this side, cut it in half, flip this over like so, drew a line so they're both the same size instead of measuring, just make sure just in case I screw up on something and then just cut this piece. And the reason why I put an X on the inside is because I accidentally screwed up and my X-Acto blade shifted. So I want these on the inside, but now what I'm gonna do, uh, but unfortunately I can't do that. So I need to see which one's really bad. I think it's this one. Anyway, so now what I need to do is I need to bevel the inside. I make sure I need to bevel this inside and this inside. And this is two inches by three and a quarter inch. This is the vent for the top of the one tower. And I cut some uh, eighth inch uh, wide strips. And I think they're 0.5 mil. And just put that in there like so. Now what I've found is when they're a little bit, I cut them a tad too long, but when I'm, instead of trimming them, because you can take too much off, I just lightly sand aside. 
I've determined that's the better way to, to go. And then I just kind of position it. And the nice thing is too, is once you do the weld on, if you don't like where it's at, or if you move it with your paintbrush, you can always adjust it later. Well, not what I mean later, I mean with like within seconds. So I just want to make sure it's where I want it to be. There you go. It's another vent. I'm just going to continue finishing those. Now this is all ready to have a top piece on it. So what I did is I just put it on a piece of plastic, traced it out, and now I'm going to cut it out with a little bit of an overlip, overlip, overhang on it. So when I glue it on, I can sand it like I can everything else. And that's all I've been doing is just doing some sanding. And um, I'd recommend wearing a mask when you sand because of the fine particulates that get in the air. But anyway, I'm going to cut this out now and then glue that on there. Well, I'm glad you made it this far. That's the conclusion of the main build. Uh, like I said, I apologize for not covering the sanding part, but I know you can go over and check out another video. Well, several, several videos. I've worked with seat styrene there. I've sanded the edges. But yeah, I overlap it just a little bit, and then I'll trim it down if I, I need to with a, with a blade. And then I'll just sand it until it's smooth. And on the main body, I do wish I would have uh, used a thicker styrene because it did, it did bow and did cause some problems and was kind of annoying. And looking back, I wish I would have used uh, 0.04 uh, inches styrene. That seems to be the best for solid structures, uh, at least for the main body. Uh, like in the panel, I used, uh, well, I'll get to that later, but I used a uh, 0.02 inch. And the taco for this video goes to Duncan McDonald. And the reason why is Duncan McDonald PM me and then we got chatting and he led me to some artwork that, or some references that inspired me to do this. And it's uh, over on DeviantArt and the pers person's name is Tugo Doom ER. I'm not, it's all together, but it's over on DeviantArt and they have some fantastic work. Go follow them, uh, promote them, do whatever. But uh, I plan on using more of their work uh, for inspiration because they're very creative and they're very good at what they do. And but I'm gonna do that. But anyway, for the talk of, for the, this video goes to Duncan McDonald for helping me out and uh, giving me some inspiration and pointing me into a direction that uh, has helped me do this fun build. But if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, I'd be more than happy uh, to uh, help you out with that. And I'm gonna pander to you for a minute. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you uh, enjoy the video and uh, subscribe to the channel. At least, I, well, I hope I earned your subscription this time. Uh, uh, with, the, with this build or uh, with any of the builds that I've done. And uh, if not, maybe another build that I'll do, I'll earn your subscription to the channel. But uh, another thing you can do for me too is also share the video and uh, get it out there, it really helps. We're also uh, starting our Facebook, not our Facebook page, <laughs> we already have a Facebook page. We're starting our webpage. Uh, it's platypusscotsman.com. You can go over there, it's in its infancy right now, but I will have more places, well, I will have places on there that'll have tools, why I use them. I have been making short videos on the tools, some of the tools that I use, because I get frequently asked questions on what they are and how I use them. So I'm using old videos to compile uh, how-to videos, and then they will be on platypuscotsman.com. Also too, we have a Facebook page, uh, Platypus Scotsman. We have a group, Platypus Scotsman Lounge, and we have Instagram, if that's where you want to see the pictures of what I do. And uh, over time, I do show more progress pictures of these builds. And I'm also, we also start a parlor account. Uh, we have a Twitter account. Uh, one of the most important things though, I would like to do is uh, thank those who support the channel, who have subscribed to the channel, who uh, leave uh, comments and, and give thumbs up. But I also really want to appreciate to those who support us on Patreon. I uh, really like to uh, thank the patrons who do that and give us support and uh, really appreciate it. But anyway, that's pretty much it. This is part one, we'll get into part two. I think the first thing we start doing in part two is dropping the engines on these things and we'll get to that and we'll start covering more. And depending on how long that video it is, hopefully it doesn't, it'll eventually go to a part three because I'm not gonna have all the painting wrapped up. But anyway, uh, you have a good night and hope everybody's treating you well and, and uh, spend time with your family and friends and and uh, let people know you care about them. 
And I uh, hope, hope your hobby is treating you fantastic and you're having a good time in your hobby. And I've been using it great right now for a really good escape. And I really want to do this build. I want builds to, uh, for Reality's Edge and Infinity and other games that I play, but this is, has been a really fun build. Way more complex than I want it to be or intended it to be in the first place, but it is what it is. Anyway, remember what my mother used to always say, that everyone can do art. Uh, I really believe that. Ciao, you have a good night.